An anti-discrimination program focused on gender diversity is drawing outrage from some conservative groups. Correspondent Claudia Cowan takes a fair and balanced look. I see a lot of hands. Instead of the three R's, these elementary school kids in Oakland spent class time focusing on gender diversity and how they can choose to be a boy or a girl or both. Gender identity is about in here. It's about what's up here and in here. As part of a program said to combat bullying, Redwood Heights Elementary brought in Gender Spectrum, an activist group whose mission is to create more gender-sensitive environments for kids. True or false, animals have only two genders. These fourth graders were told that in nature, things aren't always what they seem. Some dolphins have both boy and girl parts, and clownfish can switch genders. Gender Spectrum says that diversity applies to people, too. People can be girls, feel like girls, they can feel like boys, they can feel like both, and they can even feel like, as I said, kind of like neither. Critics say these lessons amount to indoctrination by activist groups. Public schools are here to serve children and to educate children on behalf of the parents not to cross the line and violate the rights of parents and families. District officials say the topic of gender expression is part of a larger effort to ensure students feel welcome and safe. Nobody's trying to influence the students to act in any specific way. We're just saying that if a student does exhibit these behaviors that they should not be alienated, ostracized, or most of all bullied because of it. This school is taking a very extreme position and inculcating these children at a very young age with gender confusion as opposed to gender identity. The school maintains most parents, teachers, and students had no problem with what was taught. But critics say there are not multiple genders, just boys and girls, and that this is the type of curriculum that could become commonplace throughout California if, as expected, pending legislation to teach transgender history to public school kids becomes law. In Oakland, Claudia Cowan, Fox. Growing reaction now to a new push in a California elementary school. Along with learning their ABCs, first and second graders are getting a one-hour lesson on gender diversity. A California school has hired a gender coach to teach students that there's more than one way to be a boy or a girl. All right, let's talk about it with Shannon Price Minter, Board of Faith in America Chair and Legal Director for the Center for Lesbian Rights, and Brad Dacus, President of the Conservative Pacific Justice Institute. Welcome to you both. Hello. Thank you. Pleasure to be on the program. All right, uh, Shannon, why did six and seven year olds need to learn about this at school and, and, and not something they might discuss with mom and dad at home instead? You know, it is so important that we teach children respect for difference. And it's never too early to start teaching children that people come in all shapes and sizes and kinds and that it's never okay to discriminate against someone or to hurt another person. And we, we know that there are so many students in this country who every single day they go to school are targeted by other students because they're seen as different in some way. And we know that is especially true for students who are seen as gay or transgender or gender nonconforming. They are at particularly high risk and often those young people don't have support at home. They're rejected by their families and then also harassed and bullied at school. Many of them are driven to uh, take their own lives or to make uh, attempt to take their own lives so how could we not as a society want to step up and address that just excruciating poignant harm that's happening to these young people and I'm really shocked that uh, any responsible group wouldn't be applauding this school for being proactive about trying to cut off that kind of bullying harassment at the pass and really start as early as possible that process of teaching children respect for difference. I think this is a let, very... Let, and let's bring in Brad here because we know it's, it's not just some outside groups. I mean, there are parents who have expressed concerns that this maybe is not the right subject matter for their young child. Uh, Brad, what are you doing to step in and work with those parents? Well, we at the Pacific Justice Institute, our national organization committed to defending the rights of parents. Um, and we've uh, given them counsel to opt their children out. And, and mind you, they're, they're very concerned about this. This isn't just about bullying or, and, and treating children to respect other kids. That's fine. Uh, this is a, a, a very extreme, a very controversial program uh, when you're teaching children in kindergarten, first grade, that you can be a boy, a girl, or both. Or that you may be a boy on the outside but be a girl on the inside. This brings gender confusion. And this is a, a serious price for children who pay, much less have the rights of parents stepped on. This is not a business of the government. It's not a business of public schools. This is a matter of the rights of parents 
to know what's best for their children and not to be told by the school, for example, that, boys, it's okay for you to wear uh, fingernail polish. That has, there's no place for that in public schools. And this is about indoctrination, not about uh, tolerance and accommodation. Shannon, would you be okay? Would it be a, a solution that's so worthy for you to allow the parents who are uncomfortable with this to opt out, but uh, uh, allow the teaching to continue for those who want to stay? Well, with, with all due respect, uh, that description of what's going on in this curriculum is a complete uh, uh, fabrication. That bears no relationship to the reality. This is a very thoughtful, gentle program that's about teaching children that, yes, there are different ways to be a boy or a girl, and that it's not okay to pick on a student because a boy is seen as uh, too feminine or not rough and tumble enough or a girl is seen as too yeah. masculine. These are very basic shared values in our society about do unto others as they do unto you, and um, yeah, I, as you would have them do unto you. And th this is uh, this is just an attempt to create controversy uh, about a very straightforward, sensible program. And we have to remember that as we're sitting here today, there are thousands of parents watching this program whose children are suffering and being targeted every day at school. And many of those parents don't know it because their children are afraid to talk to them. Okay, Brad, the parents, quickly, yeah, I, uh, quickly a final word to Brad. You bet, so we you can, uh, yeah, real quick. What I said was straight from their materials. Their materials, I, that was a quote, that it's okay for boys to wear nail polish. You can be a boy or a girl or both or have a boy on the outside, a girl on the inside. This is straight from their materials. Brad, We're that being very yours. accurate. If, you know, this is what I'm saying is exactly verbatim from your materials that have been produced and distributed. We have that, and it's because of our research on this that we are now making a public statement about it and going to bat for parents. You cannot spin things on the, on the air and expect to get away with it when the rights of parents and the, and the, and the welfare of these children are on the line. Kindergartners up to the uh, 12th grade. I think this is irresponsible, and the teachers union may be behind you, the CTA may be giving you money, but the parents out there and many public school teachers definitely do not agree with it, right. and we're not going to stand by and put up with it. we got to leave it there. Okay thank you for uh, to hate. Thank you for having both sides weigh in. Well, young kids, as young as five, are getting a lesson about transgender issues when classes at Horace Mitchell Primary School in Maine were read the book, I Am Jazz, about a child with a boy's body but a girl's brain. Parents are upset that they were not informed about the lesson. And now one mom is saying that her first grader is asking if he is, in fact, transgender. Joining us to discuss this, Tammy Bruce, Fox News contributor and radio talk show host, and Dr. Susan Lipkin, psychologist and author of Preventing Hazing, How Parents, Teachers, and Coaches Can Stop the Violence, Harassment, and Humiliation. So let me start here. Tammy, is this some sort of plan or indoctrination on the part of the school to get to kids first because there was not parental permission and, and in a way that really um, promotes maybe the teacher or superintendents uh, or principals? personal opinion. Yeah, look, this has been going on for quite some time, and this we've heard it also from Hillary Clinton and It Takes a Village. This is about conditioning, and not just of the children, but of the parents as well. As a gay woman, I just want to say to everyone out there also that you can be the moral arbiter of your child. It doesn't make you a bigot. But the implication here is, is that if you're left to your own devices as a parent, something will go wrong, that they have to intervene. That, of course, has got to be rejected. I mean, there's lots of discussions about age approach. Appropriateness, but what concerns me as a gay woman, as an activist, yeah. as somebody who cares about the future, is that the messages parents are receiving are mixed, and they're told that if you also resist, if you want to retain control of your family, that you're going to be called uh, a bigot or a homophobe. And I think that it's important for every parent to know that wanting to maintain control of your family, raising your child as you see fit, is the right thing to do. And I think that besides conditioning, it's also about social social engineering and it does start very early and this is why I think it's very important for every parent to clearly be involved and to know it's okay to sure. interject and to say no. I'm glad you say that because I think it's a powerful discussion to have at some point in time but, yes. but when parents are not given the option or even the notice their backs are up against the wall and they start the conversation on defense rather than open-minded. Doctor let me ask you this are kids ready to be talking about any relationship in terms of sexuality, transgender, at the age of five? Absolutely not. Why? It is 
because between five and eight, they're not thinking in a conceptual way. Mm. They haven't actually, uh, they're not relating to their own sexuality, which will change often through adolescence and as they grow into early adulthood. And it's not what is most important for them at that point. And I don't think that kids need to know this or should be knowing this. It is completely confusing to them. And as a feminist and also as a victim uh, activist, I think that it's insane to say that somebody has a boy's body and a girl's brain. What's a girl's brain? Right, I mean, exactly. the, and the book is so full of stereotypes that we've been fighting since Great the 1950s. Point. I can't imagine why they would use it. So if they need the to use it, argument against this, I agree. If they need to use it individually with one child who may be dealing with that at the age of eight or older, perhaps, but between five and eight and a group, the only person who, people who maybe should be uh, exposed to this are adults, are the staff, and perhaps the parents, but absolutely not the children. Doctor, would you go as far as saying there's harm done in some way to a child who is exposed to this at a young age, and in fact, without the opportunity to have his parents involved to guide him along or her along? I think that the there could be harm done. I think that the issue is that children do not understand what you're talking about, and it raises a kind of confusion for them. I mean, there are many men who are ballerinas who are not gay and who are not transgender, and right. there are girls who are great athletes, and, and neither are they. Right. And what is the message we're sending? I was really, I was really offended. This is really about the projection of our issues as adults onto children. And I think we have to consider that. You know, look, at a point when I was a child, I thought I was a Cocker Spaniel. And there's a point where we have these fantasies, where we think we're Superman, where we can fly, where we're the cat. It's a great note. You know, this is childhood. Uh, and this is why this is particularly troubling, I think, as well. Yeah, particularly troubling, too, just because uh, as a mom, I would just want to know. Give me the option to know so that I can be there for my kid when they come home with questions about it and prepare myself as a parent. A great, great discussion here. Um, you know, they say no, no age is too young to start learning about this from the school, but I so appreciate your mm. perspective. Tammy Bruce and Dr. Limpkins, thank you.